Have you ever stopped to think what role your mind plays when it comes to certain situations? Whether it be a level of success or how well you perform at anything in your life. The power of your mind has the ability to produce a positive or negative outcome. Today, we discuss our personal stories and successful ways to master your mind. If any of this resonates, then this is the episode for you. Welcome, everybody. Welcome to episode four, Power of the Mind. Today, I'm super excited to have special guest with us, Anthony Trucks. Anthony Trucks is a former NFL athlete, American Ninja Warrior on NBC, international speaker, host of the All Shift podcast, and founder of Identity Shift Coaching. He uses cutting-edge science and psychology to upgrade how you operate so you can elevate your life and business to reach your full potential. After being given away into foster care at three years old, being adopted into an all-white family at 14, losing his NFL career to injury, and more, he learned how to shift at a very young age. And now his life mission is teaching others how to make shift happen in their lives. Wow, what an introduction. Thank you for being here today, Anthony. We are honored. Welcome. Thank you. Happy to be here. So today's episode, guys, is around power of the mind. And we are so honored that Anthony would be here today because we follow a lot of his guidance. We follow him, Anthony Trucks, on Instagram and also his daily lives on LinkedIn, which I try to tune into when I can from the UK. Uh, And really what we want to get into is Anthony's had a phenomenal uh, eventful life and is doing some great stuff now with everything he's been through to help others. And the power of the mind, you know, our mind is a very powerful tool. It can either be our best friend or our worst enemy. So we have to treat our mind and also ourselves kindly, as we always say. So we're going to go through a number of questions. Anthony, I know I've got a lot and um, we've only got a certain amount of time, but we're going to try and get through those. And I hope that our audience will find it useful and helpful and ultimately inspirational. And one thing I have to say is, we do have a bit of um, some common background, we do. So, yeah, I worked with the NFL, the, the international mm-hmm. marketing team, uh, yeah. but I was more behind the scenes and you were on the field. So, yeah, yeah, a little bit, a little bit different. <laughs> yeah, and so I don't get the game because I'm British. And um, for me, That's football cool. is soccer. And I'm still struggling to still get a hold of the game. But one thing I do respect is the the passion from the players, um, the orchestration that goes into the sport. I mean, when you're behind the scenes, you really see what happens. And it, it's not just, you know, something that you go and watch in a stadium. There's so much orchestration. There's a lot yeah. of teamwork. And the players are under a, a lot of pressure to really perform. And then they have their fans just rooting for them. It's a, it's a pretty cool environment and experience. I'm gonna lie. I enjoyed it. Thoroughly enjoyed it. Uh, oh, it's not who I am, but it's definitely, you know, a, a big piece of me. Yeah. So I just I just wanted to say that. And the other thing that I feel that we have in common is about positivity and helping others and really driving a really positive message to inspire all. So hence why we have this podcast and why we wanted you here today. So I'm going to get started. So you've had an eventful life uh, so far, and I'm still sure there's a lot more to come with it. But first off, let's start a bit about your background. I mean, it's an incredible journey. And you know, you grew up in foster care. What was that like? And surely it must have had some, you know, quite eventful experiences, potentially childhood trauma that you may have had to overcome. Yeah, in time. I mean, at the time it was, uh, it, the funny thing is when you're in the middle of those moments, you don't know you're in the middle. They just, they don't feel good, right? It's it's hard to really grasp the, the difference. Back then there wasn't social media, you know, it wasn't as much TV coverage the way it is now. But yeah, back then, man, I had a really a difficult experience early years in life. So the formative years of my my identity and my, I guess, sense of self were actually formed in a weird way because I just dealt with a lot of heinous people doing some pretty pretty bad things, we'll call it. So, to me and, and other foster kids in a system, I believe the system has since gotten a little better, but it's by no means completely fixed. But yeah, I was just, I was given away by my mom into a very difficult situation. So my life started out uh, not feeling like I mattered which we eventually get to in life in some capacity, but to have it so early, it does become a, like a traumatic anchoring experience to your life. Yeah. Oh, wow. Well, you're a phenomenal man now. And to show that you've come through that journey, 
you're confident, you show your self-worth and you show your self-love in all you do. So I think it's, I think it's brilliant. So well done to you. And, and the next question was around you being an NFL player in the league. I mean, that's pretty competitive if you have to be competing right there on the field. And how did that work in terms of your ego? Like, did you struggle? Did you need to tame it? Did you have to kind of be careful when you competed? You're talking about after the NFL or when? When would, when would you ask? In that Dur- during, the- like being on oh, the during? field, get you know, yeah, like the, you the, the, the training, you know, having to yeah. kind of be the best. Because it, although it's teamwork, you still want to be your best. I mean, yeah, is that it's tough? Still- it's it's always and, uh, you know I I wonder if tough is the word for it. It is hard, but I don't know if it's like something where it's like negative hard, right? Because I enjoy doing yeah. hard things. I enjoy the, the difficulty of it. The funny thing is, I think a lot of people look at it and they go, "Man, I couldn't do that. That must be incredibly difficult." And it's like, yeah, but would you do it if it was easy for you? Uh huh. Right. So for us, not that it's completely easy, but it, it is easier because of how many years that were built up to that, right? So. It's a norm. I'm sure there are things in your life that if I hear what you do, I'd be like, I don't know how in the world you do that. That is craziness, right? But it's all relative to the human. So for me, yeah, football was difficult. It was hard. But man, I loved every part of the difficulty because it also provides you this, this feedback, which is, I'm pretty cool. I'm good at this. I have pride. And pride is a really unique, fun thing to have. And I think also passion, right? If you're passionate about something, no matter how hard it could be, you put your all into it to really be your best. Yeah. I think you do it. I mean, you have your moments. I mean, I, I was passionate about football, but I didn't love practice every day. You know, there's, <laughs> there's a lot of things because you, you, it's tough because if people won't even honestly own this, I wouldn't say every single day I did my absolute best. I wanted yeah. to, I had to drive to, but did I like, I know there's times I'm like, man, I'm just tired. I don't want to go out there and do this. We just get through it. Like there's days, but then yeah, 100% there are days where like I go in, I am trying to become the best edge of myself, whatever that looks like. So it's it's a roller coaster, ebb and flow. But to be honest, the big thing is is consistency. Can I consistently show up and keep putting forth effort? The more days I can show up and put forth the best effort, the better chance I have of being great. The less, the less chance I have. Yeah, I like your your thinking around the consistency because no day is the same day as the last or the next. And I think that's life, right? There is no straight line and we have the rough and the smooth, the ebb and the flow. I think it's about the attitude of how you, how you handle the two. Oh, it always is. I think that's kind of the thing is, is the attitude 100% the attitude towards it and the attitude will determine the actions we take. And if we take the right actions in the face of it, you you develop this ability to have this pride. And it's kind of cool. I say pride in a sense of when you have something you're proud of, you'll, you'll defend that fight for it, keep it, and you'll actually enjoy having it. And you cannot get that unless you do things that are hard in the face of opposition. So did you find yourself impacted by the sort of opinions of others? Because there's so many people involved. Um, and this is when I'm talking about when you're in the NFL and training and for football, so many people involved, big orchestration, everyone's got an opinion and something to say. Did you feel impacted? Did you have to kind of understand their opinion? Is their opinion? Did you have to kind of find your own stake in the ground? What was your approach? Yeah. I mean, you you have your anchor points. I mean, some people have family, some have the coaches, you know, some have friends and teammates. There's always going to be that thing that you have to anchor to, but yeah, I mean, for me, I think the thing was like, I was always in a space of realizing like, this is, this for me is me showing up so my family has food, you know, I can take care of them. I have a mm-hmm. sense of self-worth, but also after a while it becomes your identity and you're not just protecting it for other people, but you're protecting it because it's who you are and nobody wants to lose who they are, right? There's a reason like, um, I'm not going to murder somebody, right? Because that, that would be a different sense of a human being, right? I, I, w- I would lose all of who I am, you know? So I wouldn't take the action. And, and I think there's that, that thought for quite literally anything in your life where most people, when it's who you are, like if it's me, it was me. I was and identified as a great football player. So everything I would do would be in alignment with whatever it would take to be able to continue to hold that. And that's why when people, at, like at the end of the day, when individuals lose you know, a loved one, they lose a career, they fall out of a relationship, they leave sports, they leave the military. This thing that they have put so much love and energy into that is now who they are, that it's gone. That's why we fall apart. Because yeah. we don't know who we are, right? And it's it's like so it's it's actually not that hard to maintain and keep it when it's who you are. It's actually harder to lose it. So we we find more disdain and more, 
I guess, stirring of negative emotions when we fall out of line. So like, it's actually, for me, it was once it's who I am, it's, it's actually kind of easy to stay in that flow. I really like the way you put that. It's, it's easier to lose it. And, and you compared it to family loss, change of career. And those are very big changes in life. And when they mm-hmm. happen without you deciding of, about it happening, it's not your choice. It's against your own free will. It can really throw you off course. And actually, yeah. sometimes we don't get a choice, right? And we get served um, without choice. So I do believe there is a higher purpose sometimes for that. Now there's a cycle of life. Maybe you're meant to get on a better path. Um, did you realize that when you experienced those career and life changing situations, that it was for a higher purpose? I mean, at the time it must've been hard, no, but. Not then. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, okay. not in the moment. You're just like, why God? Why me? <laughs> yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. You chose anybody else, man. You had to choose me. Now there, <laughs> there's those moments that, that peak up, but in hindsight, there's, here's what I know. I run into problems in life now and my problems are fairly, they're easy for me. I'm not, not, not that every problem is easy, but the majority of one. And, and I say they're easy because it's always in a relative perspective to somebody else's. So let's say that me and you face the same problem. There's a high chance and probability that I'll, I'll tackle it a little bit better. And it's not because I'm better, not because I'm, I'm special. It's just because growing up, I went through a, a vastly different hardship so that when these things that were happening to me happened, I built this weird strength. I have a weird perspective. I say weird because it's not normal, but like I have this different strength and, and, and sense of self. And because I overcame it, I got another sense of like, I got some cool things in me, right? So yeah. when I approach problems, I do better with them than most people. And it's so what I say is a smooth sea makes not a skilled sailor. So essentially, like if you go out in a smooth sea all day, you don't know how to handle the hardships. You don't know how to handle the storms. Yeah, I'm just, I'm really good at handling storms, right? So that that's been one of the things where I don't like what happened, but I have a great appreciation for how strong it's made me in life. To where as I pursue new goals and new levels, I'm not worried about getting knocked down because I know that if I approach something, I'm coming in pretty strong. And if it has the ability to knock me down, I walk away with a new tool, not just some new failure. I really like the way you spoke about the sea, you know, sailing through a smooth sea. Well, that's all, you know, right. You know, no better, but when you're having to face that turbulent storm or sea and the ship's almost going to get spun over, you know, that's resilience. And I think that to me just speaks of the resilience that you've had through all of your experience that gives you the wisdom, the, the strength, maybe the thicker skin almost to, to endure more than maybe what some of us haven't endured, but everyone's journey is different. So I, I mean, this, this wasn't even a question on here, but I have to say this. I believe that some of us that do have, and I'm not saying that we're any special than the others, but those that have to go through some really traumatic experience and, and really toughen up, you know, become a whole superhuman and to some extent, right? I do believe that there's a reason why they're there to go through that, not only for themselves, maybe for their family, their community, but I do believe that they have a message to give the world. I like to call them light workers, Mm -hmm. um, motivational people, but I like to feel that they are rays of light in our world where there's so much noise and there's so much distraction and so much that could make you go into a place of fear and insecurity and I just feel you're one of those people. I just have to say this now because all odds against you and you've gone from strength to strength and probably not a lot of us, we hear about what you've gone through, but we didn't see behind the scenes what was really yeah, going on. Like goes on back there. But you know, the thing is cool is like you don't have to have, have gone through that stuff. To be quite honest, the space that I'm in, the light works you're talking about, all the, all we do is say, how do we make you get the lesson? Right. Like uh, this may be a bad way to say, it, but like Jay-Z is a rapper. He says, I sold, I sold crack. So you don't have to, you know, like the idea yeah. is like there's lessons extracted from these moments in life. And as long as you can get the lesson, you don't have to actually be in class. I think everybody wants to go and have in our space, a cool, amazing. I, well, I don't have a story you have. No, it's fine. But do you have the lessons? Can you apply the lessons? Have you heard of those? Right. A really essentially it's all we do in life life is a big classroom it's teaching us stuff every day and if we choose to actually pay attention to the teacher we'll get amazing lessons and things we can take and go into the next class it's prerequisites for the next level everybody wants to go and find some new success but success is it's always 
it's like a castle with a moat of problems around it. And so, yeah, you can go and try to break into the castle, but you need a drawbridge. And that drawbridge is all the previous castles you've tackled, you know, like it's all the problems <laughs> that you went through. Yeah. And so if you figure out the lessons, then you don't have to go through that. You can put the bridge down and walk across. But everybody nowadays, it's like they don't want to listen. They just want to go and like, I got to go do it myself. Like I got to learn less. Hey, you know what? Go ahead and do that. But I know me, I went through a lot of those. So I know <laughs> that I don't have to continue to do them. And I know that if I just knew this one thing, I could have avoided that thing. Yeah. So, I progress to the next level of my life. I'm like, all right, I'm going to go do that. Let me find somebody who did it, who has tackled the problems, who I can figure the lesson out from and then not have to face all the problems. I like that way you framed it because I've come, you know, it's just in my career, but through life, sometimes I went through things trying to do it on my own. Right. And you kind of like, I can't, I can't receive help. I've got to try and do it by myself. You know, because this is what served to me. I, this is my journey. It's my life. I need to take accountability. But sometimes I think we go too far down that road of count- accountability. And we have the ability to ask for help. There are people that have been through it before. There are people that are willing to help and give guidance on how they've overcome it. Doesn't mean they're going to solve your problem. But it means like, you know, you can air it. You can get support, guidance. Maybe some inspiration. Yeah. It needs some new perspective. Dude. That's really all it is. They always yeah. have these, uh, you know, the moments that go, oh, right. Yeah. That moment. That's all. Aha all moments. Have. Yeah. Aha moments. It's just a new perspective. That's I, I tell people perspective precedes enlightenment. Enlightenment is just the, the next level of seeing things. Like if we're sitting here looking at a wall and on your side, it's painted red and my side's painted green. And I say, hey, the wall's green. You go, no, it's, it's red. And I go, no, it's green. No, it's red. Are you stupid? It's red. No, it's great. Back and forth. <laughs> and eventually if one of us walks around, we go, Oh, you know, and that, that's the moment for me where I'm like, okay, now I can, I can progress to the next stage. So for a lot of people, they're in a the problem that very well could be a problem that, that the next person couldn't solve. You're not always looking for the solution. Sometimes you actually have the actual tool to solve it, but you're seeing it wrong. Yeah. So I may have somebody who is not at my level or at a different level come in. I have clients that teach me things. It's odd, right? Like, what do you mean teach me things? Well, I get to see something through their eyes and go, oh, that's the problem. Oh, I can fix that. You know, I have the tool over here, but I can't see the situation. Yeah. So for a lot of times, like, people don't realize you just essentially need someone that can see sometimes a new perspective to get the aha moment and go, oh, I could fix that. And then we move forwards. Yeah. You know, it's interesting you said that because it's perspective, right? I always believe that sometimes you're in too deep, whether it's a work project or you're trying to create something and you just want the end goal. You're focused on the destination. You're not focused on where you're at and you lose sight of it. So you don't enjoy it and you're finding it to be more problematic than it needs to be. But when you take a step back, you breathe, you just like let it breathe, you air it out, you go back in you actually allow yourself to see it from a different light. And I think sometimes even just the point of like meditating, looking after your mind as well to being able to just allow the mind to just breathe. Like it, the mind, the mind is there for thinking, right? But does it have to always think? No. Yeah. You turn it off, put it on the beach. <laughs> oh, yeah. I need a beach right now. <laughs> yeah, I, I tell people, go, go put your brain on a beach, man. Sometimes you, because when we're sleeping, the brain's on. When you're awake, the brain's on. You know, I just did a, a like a story post yesterday. Like sometimes you need to sit there and just stare at the sky for 15 minutes. Like put your brain on a beach and don't worry. You, like if you release the problem of your day for 15 minutes, the world's not going to fall apart. But you come back to that a little bit more fresh and ready to handle the problems. But everybody wants to hold on to their problems so much. It becomes like this. That's like swimming with an anchor. Like you eventually tire out. Yeah. So it was a good idea. Like let, their, let your brain relax for a bit and then come back to it later. And also... Your problems just amplify. If you keep thinking about them, you give them more energy. You give them amplification. But if you release them and almost say, I want a solution, I'm sure, like, hopefully a solution comes to me, free my mind, you're allowing space, right? I think that we hoard our problems, we carry them as a burden over our shoulder, walk around to the point that the problem is us. And we are the problem. Yeah, it becomes difficult. We end up being the one that's the biggest issue. <laughs> we exactly. don't want to face that. Nobody likes to hear that. No one likes to hear that there's something wrong with them. But you know what they'll all do? Oh, I'm not perfect. Okay, well, this was a moment that showed you that that you weren't perfect, and yet you tried to kind of cover it up. So, like, then you must assume you're perfect. It's a very interesting dynamic. 
Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's always easy to point out problems and flaws in everyone else's situations than your own. I think it's looking in the mirror, which is probably the best place to start. And and even at work, you know, sometimes there's problems with projects and things like that. And I think everyone's in, in an intense environment. Everyone's just looking to, oh, no, this went wrong. Okay, who do I point the blame on? Rather than actually going, how did we get here? And how do we overcome it? And it's the we, not the who, and the I didn't. And yeah. I mean, it's phenomenal. It, it transcends from both work to family to even just romantic relationships. So I think the mindset of, of being able to see it from that perspective. Yeah. So, you know, I know that you maybe when you were a young boy, you probably had aspirations and you probably may, may have nev- never even thought that you would be where you are today. But I do have this feeling that, you know, you are definitely where you're meant to be. And this was your calling. I mean, it's like a universe calling. Like I said, I think that you're this light worker, but maybe you never thought that when you were, you know, five years old. What's, no. what's your <laughs> thoughts? Like, how do you see things? I, I don't know. I don't even know if I'm a light worker now. You know what? I, I'm just a guy. I'm just a dude. <laughs> I tell people. I it's the, it's the But at the same time, it's, I'm being, I'm being naive to think that because I, I also, I, I work with companies like PayPal and T-Mobile and Amazon. And, you know, I'm, I speak in front of thousands, literally thousands yes. of people at a time. And I, I I've kill seen. it on stage. I have a blast doing it, right? You've seen me live? I've you? seen you. And I think that you have to come in. Oh. I'd love for you to come and talk at Zeta um, where I work because, uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we work with loads of brands as well. So, I mean, yeah. we're, we're, we'll definitely speak. We're going to be in contact yeah, more anyway. Too. I, and, I've seen yeah. you speak. Yeah, but you're phenomenal. And, yeah, you know. <laughs> Thank you audiences like you know where I work or my clients which are big brands as well they need to hear this you know sometimes we're in the day-to-day we're delivering you know we're not saving lives that's what I tell my team but we're delivering a lot of work and it's like high pressure you know we've got to make the mark and last year for COVID there was like you know furloughs staff going part-time I'm really still trying to hit the P&Ls and it was tough for a lot of us some didn't even have a job so that's even worse right but yeah. the teams really needed the the motivation. It's someone like you that can come in and go, hey, you know, before COVID, <laughs> I went through like all of it. Yeah. I've all of it. I went through COVID yeah. times 10. <laughs> well, yeah, and I also went through COVID with everybody else. I just did a different that's the thing. When COVID hit, I have had a very good quarantine. I'm not gonna lie. Like business <laughs> has been good. My relationship is good. My my health is I got I lost like 36 pounds. I'm in great shape right now. Like it, I it's saw. A, it's, it's all, it's all a matter of uh, perspectives on stuff. And so for me, I tell people I'm a regular guy and I tell people that because I need them to think that just because I went through that doesn't mean they have to go through it too, to have success. That that's really what I'm trying to get. I have an irregular desire to help people. I love, I love doing something that I love that other people love that I do. Yeah. It's a sweet spot, right? So there, there's an area where like, I'm, I'm in a space of like, I coach people and guide people and give them insights. Like it's beautiful. I love doing it. Right. But at the same time, like I go in the house and hang on my wife and we we do the same arguments over the kid doing dumb stuff. And my kids <laughs> want to play. You know what I'm saying? Like that's everybody's life. I am. Yeah. I don't live on a different planet. You know, like I yeah. <laughs> that's the thing yeah. that's crazy about it. It's like, you know, so I, I am, I guess you can call it a light worker, but I, I guess the biggest thing is, is light workers aren't flashlights we're lanterns. Yeah. You know, I'm not, I'm not pointing it on purpose saying, look at my light and light that up. I'm like, I'm just bright. And no matter where I'm sitting, you're going to see me. Exactly. I live my life that way. Now I happen yeah. to put it online and I, I have a team of people that help me make sure that the world sees that brightness. But, uh, but yeah, it's not this thing where I'm, I'm not, I'm weird. I'm not special. I'm probably special, like a ADHD special, but I'm not special <laughs> in terms of like, I have extra brain lobes in different hands and I have, you know, like I just, I've conditioned my body and I've conditioned the physical part of me and my heart to do something. It's no mm-hmm. different than building the muscle. Like if you build a physical, if I lift a weight long enough, I will get stronger. For some people, the weight is focus and discipline and, and compassion and patience and forgiveness. It's, th- it's muscles. Yeah. If you don't flex them, you won't have them. But if you do, you could have stronger ones than I do. Yeah, exactly. And you know, you mentioned your family. They're gorgeous. I've seen pictures of you guys. You. You're super cute. I think I saw you the other day on the beach and I was like, shoot man i'm in the wrong place right now <laughs> i was i was I, I i don't want to say i was hating but i just could do with that beach that okay. you're on. You I was, all you want. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah i mean i mean the family right it's a lot you're doing a lot in the day and then you have this 
you know, large family and the kids need you, the wife needs you. And how do you balance that? Because, mm-hmm. you know, you have an audience that also needs you, but you need you as well. And you, you do your coaching. So what, what's the magic trick if there is one? Uh, honestly, I have a method called the shift method. That's it. So what I realized was a lot of people, the problem isn't the information. Like they know what to do. They're listening to this now. The problem is shifting into that level, right? Actually shifting the parts of you that, that stop you from executing at a really high level, at a big vision dream level consistently over time. I, I have what I call a really good rhythm for life. I've got great cadence. And mm-hmm. so when people call balance, I, I call rhythm, right? You, you, people say like, I got a balance here and a balance here. I got a rhythm, man. I just, I just, that's my thing. It's a, it's a high tempo, high beats per minute. And so what it is, it's like, I have a way that like, like my morning routine flows that is planned well in advance. I know what I'm doing 30 days from now. I I notice when I have big ideas that aren't big enough, right? Uh, I, I can expand them. I also am very, very clear, like beyond logical, clear on what my specific goals are. And then I know how to plot paths to those cleaner than most people can understand. Like I have clients that are are doing great things, executives at large corporations. I have guys that run $10 million businesses and I hop in and work with them and they go, I never even thought that I could take my my ideas down to this level of minutia. Mm -hmm. And it's not even hard. We'll do it in 15 minutes to get it done. They're like, dad, how did you do that? I'm like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's a a method that I use, but when it's done, they're like, dude, that feels so light. So these big projects, big ideas get chopped up in a certain ways and organized and infused into their life. And they feel, they feel lighter. They feel more free. They can be more focused at home, right? So cadence and rhythm, they could be their better operational at work, all these little nuances and people like, Oh, it's productivity. No, it's not productivity, right? Productivity is is to be dialed in in that moment, right? Like Mm -hmm. in that hour, are you productive in the moment? But I'm like, take it. That's the, that's one. That's like the instrument that that's the little piece, but what's the symphony of your life? I and like if you that. can take a look at all these things. So for me, you're asking why I do it. I have a method that I, that I teach people. It's not more information. It's like, how do I take what you know and plug my system into it or merge you guys together and mold you? And then you get into this amazing cadence to where you dream at a level far beyond consciousness. Because I think right now people, they're like, I dream big. I think big. But realistically, <laughs> man, they still have comparison. They yes. get that energy. They have scarcity. They feel the imposter syndrome. There's a little bit of shame that floats around from past stuff. So I don't go big and bright. Yeah. There's overwhelm, right? These are all things that happen in the brain. And if you don't understand how to navigate those, you can't even get to being clear planning because anything that you may throw out that your brain goes, no, but look at this. You're messing it up. You can't, right? it shuts you down. Mm-hmm. So I like go through a method that's like, all right, we're going to clear that out and we get people dialed in. Then we go, okay, let's get clear in your idea. So clear that you know the moment you press the finish line. Because most people, they have ideas, but they don't even, like, I couldn't ask people, hey, do you know the moment you'll be able to sit down and, and go, okay, I'm done? No, none of them do. And, and it's okay. But when you say, like, I want to impact the world, I want to make more money, I want to have a better body. But what does, that, what does that mean? When do we know we got there? Yeah. Because if you don't know, you can't plan for it. That's why people have uh-huh. poor plans, because they don't even have a clear idea. And then if they have a plan, they plan poorly. I know a lot of people who buy planners with no idea how to plan. <laughs> I love that. I mean, it's amazing. You see, they're like, I got a planner. Okay, we're going to do with it. I'm going to put things in it. And I'm going to write numbers. Like, bro, that's not a plan. <laughs> so you know, like for me, go ahead. You know, do you know that that planner thing is, it, it's, it's, it's a really funny story because I, I've had friends that said, yeah, you know, beginning of the year, I'm going to go, I'm going to go buy a planner. I'm not a person yeah. that can write in a planner. I just do it on the phone. Right. I just yeah, do lists and I tick them and tick the boxes and that works for me. Works. Yeah. They, they were like, yeah, I'm going to get this planner. I'm going to write in it and stuff. And I swear I never heard about the planner about two weeks later. Like, yeah. The planner well, no, was gone. Not, Cause you know, they have nobody, you know what it is, is they don't know what to put in the planner. Cause they don't do, they don't plan before. That's so it. for me, whether it's like how you do your life, I find my clients walk in two different rooms. One is the room. that's like you, I just put lists on a piece of paper. Cool. Another part of it's like I have a, a, a dialed in planner and, I, and I, I just, I know I should do something, but I don't really know how to organize it. Mm-hmm. So no matter what it is, I have a way, like I have a process called, the, it's actually S-H-I-F-T. It's a shift thing you do every day. All you gotta do is get one certain thing done that moves you farther along, but there's a mm-hmm. process that goes before that. So for you, I, even as you have your non-planner, I guarantee I could look in there and take a look at one project you have going on. And that maybe it's been sitting there for longer than you've wanted to be sitting there. 
yeah. and be able to say, let me show you how to get that done in the next week or the next 14 days for sure. Right. I so think we need to talk. There, yeah. Talk right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> when you do that and you open it up, it's like, oh, and the, it gets light and I just, you just start working on it and it becomes part of your rhythm and cadence. Cause here's the thing, what you haven't even noticed yet. And most people don't is once you get, think about anytime you've passed a milestone or completed something, you go, oh, I can do more. There's something yeah. else. Yeah. Right? So when we have those things that we haven't even gotten to yet, we haven't even thought about what's past it. So That's we aren't even there. And I think that when you're thinking about, oh, I've got to get like number two done on the list, yeah. right? You haven't even written what eight, nine, 10 is because you're so focused on, oh no, I've got to do two. Okay. I can't do two today because I've got to work late. And then yeah. tomorrow the kids, and then Friday is this, blah, 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 blah. And, and you, it's that point. You have a mind, mm. your mind's blocked, right? You don't have mm. the vision to see beyond. That's cool. Yeah. And it's, and a lot of it is, and it's also overwhelming, like you said, because I guess got to get, it's weighing on me. I got to get it done. And I found for a couple of things, one, most of the stuff you think you have to do, you don't have to do. You can do yeah. it in six months and it'll be fine, but you keep, you keep clouding your mind with it. And then the stuff you do want to get done has no space to grow. And then what else will happen is like, you're like, all right, I cleared out next week to get it done. I'm going to do it next week. And you have, I got three things I got to get done, just these three. And then you get started. You're like, oh, that's a 15 hour project. <laughs> like I'm, oh, right. And then you, then you don't want to do it. Then you want to watch a new TV show that came out. <laughs> I'll do it tomorrow. Right. And it never gets set. So what I do is go, let, let's turn, let's, let's figure that out. Let's see how do we make 15 hours, maybe 10. And let's also see how do we take those 10 and, and block them in a certain way in a certain order to where it's off of your mind. So all you got to do is wake up that morning look at your planner or your notes and go, Oh, I'm just doing that today. And then do that. And then you can watch your show without being guilty Yeah, you with your friends, but you still are making progress and getting things done. And now you feel prideful. Yeah. Your identity. You see the magic of it all. It's all this yeah. flow. So yeah, that's really what I do. I, I help people get to the level of removing the issues that are stopping them from being consistent and taking action. And then I get them to execute at a level to achieve something really cool that gives them feedback of, no, that's who you are. Look, this is who you really are. Mm -hmm. They go, oh, if I can do that, I can do more. And now we start accomplishing goals, transforming inside. And then they turn to these whole new people that look back and go, man, I don't know when it happened, but I became a monster. I'm so amazing now. Yeah. And they're not. And, the, and one thing I want to say is you don't necessarily, because it, it's been, it was, it used to be really kind of put out there as a cool thing. Working a load, like working a 12 hour day means that you're a hard worker. And I no. never liked no. that, right? No, but now no. I think with COVID, it's spun it around in a different way where actually, no, you can get a lot more done. There's some days, and I'm going to say this, and there's probably coworkers on here listening to my podcast and people I work with or clients, mm -hmm. right? But there are some days where there's not so much going on. And what yeah. I do is I, I use that to just take advantage of what I couldn't do on other days. And maybe I might just take it a little bit easier because you don't necessarily have to always be doing something to be no. achieving so the value good, of the success. No. Yeah. No. You know what it is? I, I, I tell people you have to fall in love with the day and not the destination. I love that. That's so, so cool. The problem is people are so happy with the, I got to get the destination that they always got to be working. And it's like, no, man, you just got to love the day. And then if you love the day, even when you get to the destination, you'll want to get back to doing the day stuff. Like if you climb a mountain, you should probably enjoy the climb and not just being at the peak because you're going to spend more time climbing than at the peak. It's very true. So, so why not spend time loving the process? And if you do that, you'll realize like, you know what, my day, I organize it. I'm, I got some breathing room. You know what? I don't have to do this today. Like I could, but like I have a space and I'm, I'm not going to go and do something that's set for two days from now today unless I really want to. But if not, like, uh, you know what? I got it done yesterday. I'm ahead of schedule. I got an extra hour. I'm going to kick my feet up and thoroughly enjoy this TV show or this meal and not even feel a little bit guilty because I know I'm right where I'm supposed to be. That, that's yeah. a different space to get to. When you can live there, like I, that's where I live now. I'm like, I get to hang out and do my life. Nothing. <laughs> and if things come in and throw me off, like, eh, I'll figure it out because I, I have such a good flow and cadence. I'm like, I can keep it moving. But, but yeah, when you can gift yourself that, it's a game changer. Yeah, I think more of us need to do that. I work with many uh, co-workers that are like, oh, okay, I've got an hour free, right? Like, how many things can I get done? I'm like, chill. Mm. Like, I don't yeah. think that that needs to be done right now, but they're so programmed to do it that way. They feel that if they don't, they're not doing their job or they're not doing, you know, yeah. doing right by the rest of us and the team and things like that. So, so difficult, yeah. 
you know, I'm really interested in your shift process, but is there a one specific situation that you have? I, I'm, I'm not telling you to pick out your favorite client, but one scenario that was just phenomenal that you managed to achieve incredible results with a client. Oh, with a client? Oh, yeah. We had uh, it's a bunch, but let's go with Natasha. She comes to mind immediately. So Natasha, she is up in Canada, and she essentially was in this point where she, you know, COVID hit. She had a brick and mortar business, therapy. And she was kind of having a pivot online. She'd already kind of been doing some things online, but not at a big, big level. And so she was thinking like, man, I got to find a way to retain the majority of my clientele at this brick and mortar, but not actually be able to see them. And I want to say she still maintained like a 75% um, you know, level of income with the business going wow. from physical to completely digital. And I had this idea. It's like, well, how many other people do you think uh, have the same problem? She's like, oh, hundreds. I was like, well, let's create something for them. Oh, I'm not the person to do that. I, there's, I don't even know what I would do, right? I, I'm like, let's figure it out. So I kid you not, in like four or five days, we kind of figured it out. We're like, all right, what we can do, how we, so we got it. First, her mind had to get to the point of, I can do this. Right? Yeah. First, I, get there. I can teach people this because she'd been doing it. So I'm like, you could do it. So that's the first part, right? She had to get to the point of like, I'm not the imposter, I can actually put it out uh-huh, there. Yeah. So then we put her past this point of like the scarcity of like, yeah, but what if they all take my clients? No, no, don't, no, no one's gonna take your clients. Like you're gonna be fine. Do your thing, right? The, the, this is a piece. So we end up put it together. She launches it, and it took. I want to say, I was on the call on a call with her when the first sale came in, wow. and fast forward four weeks, she had brought in ninety five thousand dollars US wow. from her program. She worked with like 400 plus, like 470 something different businesses that were dying to get her system and her process that she'd already been doing, right? And so a lot of it was like along the journey, like being clear, what does this thing do? What's it going to create? Okay, cool. Now we're like, all right, over five days, what are we building? Step one, step two, and built it. We built it little by little. Then it's like, all right, now click live, publish it, go call it. Like that was the thing. Now take action on the plan and it gets momentum. And then she went from being just this, you know, she had done some great things. She ended up being British Columbia's, um, she had the, the 2020 award for confidence and excellence. Wow. For, for a program that didn't even exist until we thought of it, you know what I'm saying? And it wasn't something where it's like, it wasn't the strategy. People like, Oh, what strategy did you use? We just <laughs> figured out how to make her figure it, like become a, I call her a prolific executor. Like we got her past the headaches and hurdles. We made her, we made her shift into that next level of herself and it's it's a thing as cool as now it's something she has as a skill set she can use forever. Yeah. Like there'll be there'll be limitations. She'll find some hangups and she'll, you know, she'll get no, but she for the first time now saw like, oh wow. I didn't even know because she was already like doing pretty well. Nobody realizes how much better they can do because they're just like there. It's like a like a fish in water. You don't know yeah. you're in water. You're just kind of there, like, oh, I'm good. But no, you're not. Like <laughs> it's gasoline you're swimming in, you know, like you can do <laughs> fresh water. So we just do that, man. That's one of the, that's my, one of my top favorite clients that I've worked with. Cause she just got a huge heart. She'd done some great things. And, and it's not even like, I, I didn't have to like, you got it. I had to pat her back it was more of just like, let's keep pushing. Let's keep pushing. And we get to mm-hmm. find the process and it worked out. That's incredible. I love that. And when you said, you know, a, a fish in water, it's like being in your comfort zone. You know, everyone, I think that's one of the things that we hold ourselves back with is staying in our comfort zone. We don't want change. And change is actually powerful for our brain, right? Change we, is powerful. We, want change. we don't want to change. That's the thing. It's crazy, I think. We yeah. Want change. yeah. Every good thing in life has happened from change, but we don't want to change. Yeah. We're stubborn with it. And I think that's yeah. also the ego that goes, oh, last time something else changed, you know, you had to do this and that happened and you lost money or this person stabbed you in the back or it didn't work out. So you end up getting kind of, in that trail of negative thought that puts you off. I still want that change, but I'm not going to do it because of what happened last time, or it's not going to work out. And and that's the hurdles that, you know, I think that you probably get your clients over very quickly with your process. So that's really cool to hear. So in terms of like um, what's helped you with your mindset today, as well as the ability to empower and coach, coach others, is there something specific that you it sounds like there's a number of things and it sounds like you have this rhythm, which with your symphony, symphony of life, there's so many different yeah. components. Would you say it's one thing or a bunch of things? Um, that allows me to be, to do what I do. Yeah. It's a collection of skill sets. Cause the thing is what I do is different than what my method does. 
You know, I, I, I don't want people to think like I have to have Anthony to use a method. You really don't, right? You can seriously mm -hmm. go take it's it's built in a process with tools that like I could disappear tomorrow and it could still run without me. That's really cool. But, but the re the way I look at it is like I have become a, a great like you know the uh, audible I'm phenomenal understanding it well enough to make the tweaks. You know, it could be a fast car that you can drive without somebody, but if you have the mechanic who built it, he could help you out. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So, so for me, like the, I think one of the tools is I'm I try to be as best I can a a good listener beyond my ego. There's this thought that most people say I'm a perfectionist. I'm a perfectionist, and and what I realize is no, you're just you're blocked to other people's joy. And it sounds mm -hmm. on what I mean, though, is other people, they're the ones that can tell you how perfect it is, but yeah. you haven't put it in the world to let them give you feedback. And the reason most people don't is because they're afraid of the feedback because it'll take their ego down. It'll yeah. make them feel bad. And it's like, no, nah, if you're, if you're do if you're making it for you, then make it for you and don't put it out. But if you're going to tell me you're making it for the world, give it to the world, let the world tell you what it wants. And then when they tell you what they want, it's not a personal attack on you. It's them saying, hey, can we make this better this way? And then you can go, yeah, I'm here to serve you. Let me make it better. So in my world, like I've gone through the muck of like having people like, Ant, this sucks. They're like, can I get my money back? And I'm like, yes, but then I also want you to take it for free. And I want to figure out what I did wrong. It was like five, six years ago I used to do this. Like, what did I, what was could have been better? That's so I cool. kept doing it. I kept doing it. And so little by little now, it's like, we haven't had returns, refunds in years because we, we've dialed this thing in. And the only reason is because I took the lumps. I'm not, yeah. I'm, I'm no longer perfectionist, perfectionist. Like I, I want it to be perfect, but I realize I cannot with my single brain perfect it for somebody else. They got to do that. And I got to yeah. help them. I think there's also a bit of a, a danger with the whole term perfection. I, I think we should stray away from perfection and say, it's fine to have imperfections. You find perfection from imperfection, you know, like being mm -hmm. imperfect is actually the way forward because you look at the flaws and you embellish them to being successful and positive. Perfection almost makes you think that you have to get to a square box or to a certain template. And mm -hmm. I don't think everything has a template. Like we said, like life doesn't even go in a straight line. So with new ventures, business ideas, projects, it might have not been done before. So what are you trying to do? What are you trying to fit into? You have to kind of almost be, um, you know, free to the improvisation that you kind of go through, right? Like you said, there needs to be a process, but you also have to be almost open-minded to allow some flow in what yeah. you do, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. have to. Yeah, there's got to be some kind of ebb and because that's you learn. That's how life is. It's a matter of finding out what's going on and then making tweaks and adjusting them. And that's again, fall in love with the day. You fall in love with that part of the process, not just having it perfect. You know, when you fall in yeah. love with actually enjoying that, that is, then it's fine. <laughs> the falling in love with the day, right? I like this concept. And with me, I do try to do that personally. Like I start my day in a certain way um, and it really sets me up to have a positive mindset. There has been times though, right? And I'm sure it's for you. Like you, you're in that, you know, your rhythm, what you do to set you up for a great day and you have like plans and everything, but something unexpected just looms in. It's Have either a situation or someone just I don't want to say it just hacks you off or they really try to test you and mm -hmm. they're having a bad day or they're in their ego. And yeah. like, well, how do you handle those situations where it could be trying to create a bad day? W mm -hmm. what, what is your approach? I don't, I don't take the gift, man. There's a, <laughs> there's a story I heard years ago about, I think it was Gandhi. Either somebody did this to Gandhi or somebody used this story with his name. But this, this, you know, we'll call it a famous person. Somebody walks up and goes, I hate you. I hate your guts. And they go, thank you. No, I don't think you get it. I hate you. You're a horrible person. How could you do it? No, thank you. No, I don't get it. Thank you. Ah, and they run off. You know, they walk away. And one of the guys walks up, goes, how could you let that person talk to you like that? And he says, well, if somebody comes up and tries to give you a gift and you don't accept it, they then have to walk off with it. Yeah. So for me, when people in my life coming at me in weird ways, I realize that people who are incredibly happy and joyous, they don't do that. So yeah. if you're doing it, I already know you're in a funky place and I'm not, <laughs> I don't like coming down to hang out with you out there. And, and two, if I don't accept your gift, like even acknowledge that you had that or, or and it, what it looks like is acknowledging it or responding to it or trying to justify it or be argumentative, that's you accepting the gift. I just don't accept the gift. I go, all right, well, cool. And I move on with my day. I just like, yeah. I do live streams and you get people that troll me on the live stream. I get in, you know, inbox messages and stuff. And I just, I literally look at it and press on with my day. I'm not, yeah. I'm not taking a gift. 
And so I go. Now, there are things that are circumstances we cannot, like, you know, emergencies in life and things go wrong. That's a different conversation, right? There's mm-hmm. a way you have to audible. And, and the idea is if you have a plan, the good thing is if it's structured, you know exactly where you got off and where you can get back on. When mm-hmm. you don't have an actual plan and step-by-step stuff, what ends up happening is you get off and you'll be off for months, sometimes yes. years. It's hard to get back on track. Yes. So a lot of what I do is like I help people understand the plan. It's not just for moving through now, but it's realizing life is what happens between your plans. Yeah. But if you have a plan, you can get right back to it. And it's it's that phrase of like, you know, life doesn't happen to us. We create our life, right? We are the creator yeah. of what we want. And I like the way you said, I'm not taking the gift. I've read that as well. And I love that. It mm-hmm. it can, it, if you're not, if you're not open-minded to it, if you're not conscious of it, it can really bring you down. And I've been in those places. So now mm-hmm. when I see it coming, I'm like, well, okay, I see you. I'm not taking mm-hmm. you with me. I'm not jumping on yeah. your train. I've got I'm my totally- own. Yeah, 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 yeah. You ride over there. I'm riding over here. Mm-hmm. But um, I, just, I, I know this might be a tough one for you to answer because you've been through so much. You've experienced so much. Still a young man, <laughs> but, yeah, but, but, but you've gone through a lot. So, but is there, if there's one moment in your personal journey that has been most valuable to you, what would you say that was and why? Uh, one moment. There's a lot of moments there, man. But yeah. Uh, there, there was a moment, there was a moment in 2016, like I had, there's a lot of backstory to it, but I'd gone through divorce. You know, I wasn't doing great in business. Uh, I was just kind of like doing my thing, floating around and my kids didn't have a great father. I just wasn't a great guy. Mm. And I wouldn't say I was a bad guy, but I wasn't living by my faith the way I, I promised my God. And I definitely wasn't living right. I remember I woke up New Year's Day, 2016, and I was laying next to this woman who'd flown out from Russia to California, only spoke Russian. It was a very just intimate, physical, lustful relationship. It wasn't even a relationship. It was just, you know, two people. And I remember waking up and like going to the bathroom and having a really just a look at myself and being like, I don't like you. Oh, whoa. Didn't like, just didn't like me. It was, that was kind of the best way to explain. I was a guy that I would not want my daughter to be with. I was a guy I didn't want my sons to be like, and my mom wouldn't, my mom had passed away and she wouldn't have approved of this. And my God wouldn't let me into heaven acting like this. So it was more of the moment of like, dude, get it together. And that was a com- like the common moment where I could say, like, I realized that I was the common denominator in all my problems. Mm. We all are. We have, we have a lot going on. Yeah. And when we don't realize we're the common denominator, we don't think you have to work on anything. Exactly. So when I realized, like, dude, you're the common denominator, I was like, oh, all right, I got to do something. And that was one of the catalyst moments to me actually changing my life. That's a great story. That's the man in the mirror story. New Year's Day 2016. Yeah, man. Different you really, That's yeah. Different. yeah. Brilliant. No, I love it. And I know, I know how hard divorce can be. It can actually throw you off track. Um, mm-hmm. I've been through it myself, but I was lucky that when I was going through it, it was actually the point in my life where I actually was before choosing the divorce, I looked in the mirror and I said, why are you even in this marriage? So part right. of my divorce was me taking accountability for choices and behaviors that I initiated and chose that were all me common denominator creating those realities so yeah so i want to end on um this final final question what okay. would you if you were talking to An- anthony 20 years young anthony years what would what advice would you give him there's a lot of things i would give him uh 20 years so i'm gonna take it to actual age so 20 years ago <laughs> i would have been about 17 yeah. So 17 year old man, 17 year old man would have been like, bro, stop doing dumb stuff. I, I got arrested for breaking into cars with buddies because I just, you know, we do dumb kid stuff. And it wasn't even, I feel so bad about those days because people came out to their cars and things were stolen. Like, well, who does that? Just a dumb, bad little kid running the streets. Seriously. So yeah. that guy would be like, bro, we quit doing dumb stuff. Here's what I'll tell people at the end of the day, you have a skill set and an ability that you can actually utilize to do some really cool things for the world. However, not if they're behind bars. Yeah. That's it. I mean, I, I imagine if I didn't figure my life out, this whole guy would be behind bars, having all this, this knowledge and ability for knowledge, possibly just tucked away, just wasted. So for me, man, yeah, it's like, uh, I would have been like, stop doing that and do better. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I like that. <laughs> I think we've all done, done some silly stuff as well. I, I've, 
done yeah. some silly stuff when I look back. So, you know, it's all part of growing up. It's all part of life, right? If we can become better, sure. then then it's something we can look back and just be a good example for. Yeah. So it's it's been fantastic to just get your insight, your wisdom, all your great advice, Anthony. Thank you so much for being with us today. I yeah, actually do think that there's a number of people that probably would love your services. You're probably in high demand. Yeah, we get a lot of, a lot of people, but I love it. The, the, it's built and designed to where it's not just me too. So like I have a great team of coaches that work alongside. I lead the whole show, but they're the ones that make sure everybody's taken care of and they do some cool things. But yeah, yeah they, we don't have a shortage of clients by any means. So I'll definitely be in touch. I think there's a few things that you could actually help me on. Um, yeah. So I would love to talk to you about that. And and even just in my day job in the corporate world, I think that that you'd be fantastic in some of our talks that we do. And yeah, so we will be in touch for sure. And awesome. I'm going to be tuning in to your podcast when I can. And yeah. just for everyone to know, we can follow Anthony at www.anthonytrucks.com. Yes. And it's Anthony Trucks on Instagram. Are there any other places on social that um, we can catch you? Anywhere you go, YouTube, LinkedIn, Instagram, Twitter, wherever you go, it's at Anthony Trucks. And yeah. As far as I know, I can't think of another one. The only person besides myself named that I know of is my son. Okay. And one I'm final not- question or just curious, because yeah. the name Anthony Trucks, do you have a truck with like all your branding? Or I, have, is- well, his thing, I, I didn't have a truck. The first truck I purchased was in 2017. That's the wow. first time. Right. So I've only had a truck for four years. My last name's been trucks for a long time. I was like, I don't want a truck. I like cars. And I got a truck. I'm like, oh, I love my truck. I actually just last year bought a brand new, like top of the line, like every bell and whistle I could humanly. I had to get it shipped from a different state to my state to get it. Cool. Uh, but I have like my favorite truck ever. Oh, I love it. Well, I'll, I'll hopefully you put that truck out on your Instagram or you do some motivational talks from the truck because I think that would well, be we a really good scene. We have something in mind. It's, we're looking at doing uh, the trucks talks. Ah, oh, yeah. That's so cool. Because there's trucks and we're talking. Yeah. So like yeah. something like that. Trucks talk. I don't know. I was somewhere like because I'm a, a truck in a truck talking. So I'm <laughs> trucks in a truck and I'm talking. Yeah, I like that. We'll stay tuned for that though. So thank you yeah. so much. Check it out. Welcome. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Thank you.